1300 Ks on the YT Decoy 29er. Is it any good? Let's go find out. Welcome back to Sam's Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes. And today, it's all about the YT29er, the duck. 1,300 kilometers I've done on this beast. And if you're thinking about buying the duck, 29er or mullet, you need to watch this review. And riders, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. It's free and it really helps the channel grow. So let's get into the review. All right, riders, you know I'm a little bit crazy. And I'm going to give you the conclusion first because we all want to know when we're looking at reviews how the bike really is. And the decoy 29er at my local trails is in its element. It's a trail bike, 150, 145, and it likes being on trails that aren't too hardcore. And I've ridden it in all terrains, but I found it the most at home as a trail bike, as it says on the packet. And if I'm honest, I wasn't that keen on the decoy 29er, but man, it surprised me. It's dangerous, dangerously fast, so much traction. And I really enjoyed the decoy. For me, it's a great all round e-bike. I rode the 29er at my local bike park. If you haven't seen the video, link will be in the description. And if I'm honest, it is good at doing that, but the mullet is better. And for me, the 150, 145, I found loads of traction, but at the same time, I found I got out of its limit or out of my comfort zone on that bike quicker than I would on a bigger enduro bike. It definitely can ride bike park, but you just need to slow it down a little bit. It jumps really well, it's super poppy. And I found with the 29 wheels, the bike picked up speed and I had to brake check into a lot of jumps because I was actually over jumping jumps. And with 150 and 145 travel, you don't want to be over jumping jumps. And for uphill, it has a very long chain stay and it's got 150 suspension at the front. So basically it puts you in a very nice seated position when you're going uphill. It climbs really well and it definitely climbs better than my old mullet. And the most asked question on the channel, which duck is better, the mullet or the 29? I would say for 70 or 80% of what we're riding day to day, the 29 is better. But when things get steep, gnarly and technical, I think I preferred the mullet over the 29er. The riders, that's what I think of the decoy, but there's loads more information coming to seal the deal whether you buy the decoy 29er or not. So who are YT? YT are a direct-to-consumer company based in Germany. They sell their bikes all over the world. You go online, you pick your bike, you pick your size, the bike arrives in a box, and if there's any problems, you speak to them directly. So basically, you're taking out the middleman. And what you get is a better value bike, you get better suspension, you get better parts than you probably would get at a bike shop. So let's check out under the bonnet and what the bike's rocking. The YT Decoy comes with a Shimano E8000 motor with 70 Nm, a 540 watt YT owned battery, running on 29 wheels, 150 and 145 of travel, 482 reach in the extra large, which I'm testing. So if you're new to e-bikes, the Shimano E8000 came out around four years ago. And yes, it's true, a new Shimano motor was released two months ago. It is smaller, it is lighter, and it does have more power. But I don't think it makes the E8000 obsolete. For me, the E8000 is a workhorse. It might be old, but it's super reliable, and I think it's not about the power. So the old one has 70 Nm, the new one has 85. But when you're riding out for two or three hours, you cannot use that much power that often because you will drain your battery. The decoy comes with a 540 watt battery. And everyone asks, how far am I gonna be able to get? What sort of range? 
Range is a really difficult thing to explain. There's so many variables. You've got the rider weight, you've got the rider input, you've got the terrain, the steepness, how cold it is. But typically for me, I'm getting around two and a half to three and a half hours of pretty hardcore mountain bike riding. The decoy comes with a two year warranty. And if you have a problem with the Shimano motor, you can get that fixed locally. But if you have a problem with the battery or the connection or the frame, that would have to be dealt with by YT. The decoy comes in five sizes, which is really impressive. And I'm riding an extra large at 183 centimeters, but I could ride a large or an extra large. I'm right in between sizes. And a rule of thumb for me is, if you're new to mountain biking and you're right in between the sizes, I would size up. And if you're a more experienced rider, you will know whether you like a long bike or a short bike. I find a shorter bike is more playful in and out of corners. You can change the direction of the bike quicker, but a longer bike with a longer reach will be more stable and more planted at high speeds. The decoy is really well priced and it comes in two models. The base, 4,399 euros. And the Pro that I'm riding, 5,599 euros. Both bikes are very good value. And if you're a beginner to e-biking, the base model, the 4,400, it's gonna get the job done. The main difference, there are a lot of differences, but the main difference is the brakes are more adjustable and the suspension's more adjustable and tunable. If I was gonna buy the decoy, I would go for the Pro because I like to be able to adjust the suspension more. The only thing you're gonna to have to change if you wanna ride the bike aggressively is the tires. The tires that come on the decoy are sort of an EXO casing, a lighter casing. And on my first decoy, I think I got about two rides before I ruined those tires. And while we're talking about tires, I have done 1100 Ks on the eddy currents and I have had not one problem, not one puncher. And there's about another thousand Ks in these tires. Definitely can recommend them. And riders, a few things I would be asking myself in 2020, should I be buying the decoy, would be, should I be buying into old technology? If you haven't heard, the new Shimano motor, the EP8, has had some delays. And combined with COVID, there is a worldwide shortage of e-bikes right now. I personally think if you're looking for a trail e-bike 29er right now, then this is a great option because in Europe, it's actually in stock. And yes, the new Shimano motor is lighter, smaller, and has more power but you're probably gonna wait six to nine months to get yourself on a bike. One thing I wanna say is the 540 watt battery is a YT specific battery. And that means if you wanna travel with this bike, you wanna to go to the Pyrenees or the Alps and you wanna put your bike on a plane, you will not be able to rent a battery at the other end. So if you wanna travel, probably not a good idea. And also March, 2019, when the original Duck was released, YT was saying they were going to release a 700 watt battery. We are still waiting for that 700 watt battery. I'm not sure what's going on. YT told me they are working on it, but they have no specific date for a release as yet. But it's not all gravy. On the first ride, in the first kilometer, I broke the chain. I know, it was really weird. I've never had that before. I don't blame YT. Uh, these things happen. These bikes come all the way around the world, you know, so that's one of the things that you need to think about when you're buying online i had a quick link in the house i had a chain breaker and i fixed the bike in about five minutes so absolutely no problem but they're the things you need to think about when you're buying online you can't just take it back to that bike shop and the miniature water bottle from yt it's actually 40 euros and for me it you could really taste the plastic in the water i think they would be better off making it 10 or 15 euros or making it 40 euros and just making it better quality because YT really have you by the short and curlies because it's the only water bottle that will fit in this spot. On the original decoy, I said the same thing. I don't know who was thinking putting a button here. It's the exact spot you want to put your spare tube. And what I do now is I turn the bike on and then I put the tube in its place and yeah, it's a little bit annoying. 
And the seat, for me, it's not the most comfortable seat. It's all right, but it would be something that I would change in the future. And as I mentioned, you will need to change the tires if you wanna ride the bike aggressively. So who is the Decoy 29er for? I think it's for someone that wants a good value bike, that's looking for a trail bike, that doesn't wanna to go too aggressive, and also that doesn't really wanna ride for more than three hours. So if that sounds like you, I think the Decoy is a great buy. And the million dollar question, would I buy the Duck 29er in 2020? I'm gonna say for like 70 or 80% of the riding that I do, this is a better bike. But I don't think I would buy this bike. I think I preferred my mullet because I didn't find it that much better in the 70 and 80%. It was better, but I missed in the last 20% the more travel and the shorter back end. So I would say for me, the mullet was the winner. If I had some suggestions to make this bike better for the next model, I think it needs more travel at the front, 160, 170 about 10 mil more at the back and a little bit shorter chain stay. I'd like to see one of those flip chips so we could take it like 10 mil back at the back end. And riders, that's it for the review of the decoy. I hope you enjoyed it. And I wanna say thanks to YT for sending me the bike. I really had a lot of fun on it. And riders, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. It really means a lot. And stay safe out there. And I will see you next week.